homie. Would you please break a damn storm? He took it out. Oh, for you. It's a Friday PFT OT. It also lands in the PFT PM podcast file. Two topics, but important topics. And I want to start with what was the topic of the day, at least for Thursday morning. The report from WDIV TV in Detroit that the Lions are engaged in trade talks involving quarterback Matthew Stafford. Now, the Lions called the report 100% false. We went through all the details as to why it makes no sense to trade Matthew Stafford. First of all, $32 million cap charge for a guy who wouldn't be on your team this year if you trade him. Second of all, when owner Martha Firestone Ford came out in December and said that Coach Matt Patricia and GM Bob Quinn will be back, I got the impression that the pressure is on both of them to get it done next year, and it's going to be harder to get it done if Matthew Stafford isn't your quarterback because who's your quarterback going to be? And also, to the extent that ownership seems to be sensitive to what fans are saying, you don't want to give the fans more reason to complain by sending away the guy who has become the face of the franchise since he arrived as the first overall pick in 2009. Now, for clarity, WDIV reported initially that the trade talks were happening based on unnamed sources close to Stafford and to the Lions. Throughout the course of the day, that was revised to say not just, or to say only the Lions, not both the Lions and Stafford. And I thought that was a little curious because they said, Sources close to Stafford, sources close to the Lions. They they did the stealth edit where they dumped Stafford. More on that in a minute as to what that may be about. Here's the report that they have posted today. And I'm going to read it word for word because it's not very long. The Detroit Lions have denied Local 4's report that they've been engaged in trade talks with quarterback Matthew Stafford for the past few weeks. We stand by our story and by our sources. We find tremendous validity in what we are reporting because of what Kelly Stafford posted on Instagram. Before our report was made, she posted that if Detroit was done with her husband, then they would like to go to the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers need a quarterback after Phillip Rivers left. The fact that Kelly posted that before our report tells us things are going on behind the scenes and our sources later confirmed it. Again, we are only reporting trade talks for Stafford, and those talks have definitely taken place. All right. Uh, to me, the way that was worded, that tells me that somebody was reading the tea leaves and trying to get ahead of what others they believed would eventually report, that the circumstances made them think that trade talks were happening regardless of whether or not trade talks are happening. And I think that does happen from time to time where – it isn't that somebody is making it up per se, although they kind of are. It's more along the lines of we see where the ball is moving, so we're just going to go ahead and nudge it in that direction. And if push comes to shove, we'll stand by our report and we'll stand by our sources. There's another dynamic at play here. Last year, WDIV interviewed Kelly Stafford. So there's a connection there. And Kelly Stafford's the one who's already let this cat out of the bag regarding the notion that if Detroit's done with us, let's go to the Chargers. I can't help but wonder whether or not she's the source and the only source of this report and whether she believes that there are trade talks and maybe she's wrong or she heard something that she's misinterpreting or, you know, we've seen a lot of things being spoken into existence in recent weeks. Maybe she's trying to push some buttons and pull some strings and pull some levers and get a trade to actually happen now that the cat's out of the bag. And look, it's considered bad form to speculate on who someone's sources are. That's never stopped me before. And I think in a case like this, WDIV has opened the door by editing their initial report to remove sources close to Stafford and have it hinge only on sources close to the Lions. You know, it's it's almost like... A, it's, it's almost like she wants to have full and complete plausible deniability that she's not the source. But there's enough breadcrumbs there, especially when you consider that she's on the record addressing the possibility that the Lions don't want Matthew Stafford. It just makes me wonder whether or not she's the source and whether or not she's either misinformed about what's happening or she's trying to speak this into existence that she wants to get to the Chargers, that she wants trade talks to happen, and maybe you pull the cord on the lawnmower by saying the trade talks are happening. Again, this is all just speculation based on 20 years of covering 
the NFL and seeing dynamics like this play out. Something's going on here. And n- neither of the items written by WDTV or not, not it's WDIV TV have been particularly well done or clear or uh, able to inspire a whole lot of confidence that they really understand how to properly source a story. There's just something about this that seems odd to me. And uh, we'll see how that all plays out in the coming days. But I don't think Matthew Stafford is going anywhere. If he wants out, that's a different issue because it's very hard to have a successful football team if your franchise quarterback doesn't want to be there anymore. Maybe that's where this eventually is heading. All right, the NFL and the NFLPA heading toward a new CBA, unless they aren't. And at some point, they will have a new CBA. And I think there's been a very pragmatic view taken by the NFLPA as it relates to the offer that's currently on the table. They understand the upper leadership of the union that at some point the players are going to say okay to 17 games. You can either say okay later as a lockout is about to infringe on everyone's game checks, or you can say okay now at a time when uh, you can take that new CBA and you can parlay it into big money TV deals that are done before the presidential election this year potentially hurts ratings before a recession potentially begins. It's better to do the deal now than to wait until the players are feeling themselves pressed up against the wall as game checks are about to be forfeited forever. I say all that because ESPN reported on Thursday night that the union is actually now taking the case directly to all players. Now, there's no guarantee all players are going to participate, but they're having eight conference calls one per division, the players have the call-in information, and the players have a chance to hear exactly from NFLPA leadership what's going on. And I think that that this may be a way to try to get the player reps to come around because the player reps aren't coming around on the idea that this is a smart deal to do. They don't want 17 games. They're pushing back against this proposal. And I think that, that the judgment and the wisdom here of Demora Smith, it's spot on. Eventually, the players are going to accept this, so why not do it now? Now, maybe the end result of this is, screw it, we're going to take a lockout. We're not going to play 17 games ever. We're never going to say yes to this. If that's the case, then keep saving your money, dig in, and prepare for the lockout that is coming. Either way, the NFL is getting to 17 games, and I think it's smart to just go ahead and do the deal now because you're going to do the same deal later. And maybe there's a chance later the deal isn't as good because the TV deals may not be as good later that's the thing to keep in mind so the union trying to get the players on board the rank and file on board in the hopes of getting the player representatives on board because two-thirds of them have to accept this proposal before the union members can engage in what would be a simple majority vote to accept the nfl current proposal for a 10-game cba based upon or a 10-year cba excuse me based upon a 17-game regular season that would begin by 2021. All right, that's it. Let's call it there. PFTOT, PFTPM, a couple of big topics to consider as the weekend unfolds. Enjoy your weekend of XFL action. Sims, I'm told, will be back on Monday. We'll continue the NFL discussion leading up to the scouting combine, which will be here a week from Monday, we're going to be in Indianapolis Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of that last week of February with plenty of interviews of coaches and general managers. We'll have content for you all weekend long at profootballtalk.com. Enjoy the weekend. See you Monday. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.